Hello and welcome to the fourth lesson in our series on electrodynamics. In the previous lesson, we found that changing the magnetic flux around a conductor could create an EMF and current. In today's lesson, we will be looking at how machines called generators can use movement to create electricity. Generators are vitally important as they create almost all of the electricity we use in our homes and businesses. These generators can be the small portable generators like those found on a bicycle lamp or the petrol-driven generators used at construction sites. Very big generators at power stations use the motion of steam, water or wind to create electricity. We can use electromagnetic induction to make wind, water or steam work for us in a constructive way. Now, we already looked at a very simple generator in the previous lesson. By placing a coil in a changing magnetic flux, electricity could be produced from a simple water wheel. Luckily, we have already encountered a machine that allows movement of a coil through a magnet field. Does this machine look familiar? That's right. The electric motor allows a coil to change its position in a magnetic field. In fact, the parts of a motor and a generator are the same. All that we need to do to turn an electric motor like this into a generator is to change the way we use it. An electric motor changes electrical energy into mechanical energy. This small torch uses the movement of a human hand to turn the little generator at high speed. The movement of the armature inside creates electricity to make the light shine. Let's look inside the generator and see how the different parts work together to make the electricity. Movement of a handle or a water wheel or even a windmill turns the coil, called the armature in the magnetic field, created by the permanent magnets. This creates electricity. Let's look at the steps to help us understand how it works. When a wire moves through a magnetic field, a current is produced. We use the right-hand dynamo rule to find its direction. A dynamo is a type of generator that makes direct current. Let's see if we can't put the right-hand dynamo rule to use inside a generator. In this diagram of a moving armature, in which direction would the current be induced? Try it for yourself. As a piece of advice, why don't you choose only one wire to work with at a time? With the right hand rule, start with the first finger in line with the field, from north to south. Let's work with the wire on the left in the diagram first. Now, line your thumb up with the direction of thrust or movement. Now, look at your second finger on your right hand. It should be pointing towards you. This is the direction of current. Check to see if your right hand looks like the diagram here. It's important to practice this so we can see that the wire moving upwards next to the south pole will have current moving outwards. Now, we need a way to allow the current out of the armature so that we can use it. To do this, we use a split ring commutator. Watch as the generator turns. One part of the armature is always attached to only one of the split rings. When the armature turns from the windmill, the armature and commutator also turn. As it rotates, it changes the brush that it touches. This means that one brush will only touch a part of the armature that is moving in one direction. So, if a particular brush only touches a wire moving in one direction, the current only flows in on one direction through the light bulb. Now that we have seen how to make a direct current generator, let's see how to make an alternating current generator. The only difference between the two designs is how the brushes are connected to the armature. The DC generator has a split ring commutator, while the AC generator has slip rings. When the AC generator spins, 
The slip rings attach one side of the armature to a brush all the way around. This means that the wire is moving both up and down as the armature turns. This means that current flows in one direction and then the other direction when the same wire changes direction. So the current also changes direction. AC or alternating current generators have a significant advantage over DC generators because there is no break in connection when the slip rings rotate. Since both AC and DC generators use electromagnetic induction, we can use Faraday's law to make them produce more EMF. This is good as this means more electricity. Remember that the factors that affect the EMF are given by this equation. The EMF is equal to the number of turns multiplied by the rate of change of magnetic flux. So, how do I make a better generator? We can simply add more turns to get more EMF. Or, we could increase the strength of the magnets to increase the change in flux. The easiest way to make more electricity from a generator is simply to turn it faster, increasing the rate of change of magnetic flux. Any generator does not produce a constant voltage, and we can use Faraday's law to understand why. When the armature turns, the greatest change of flux occurs when the wires are the closest to the magnets. So the voltage from each generator will change with time. Well, I certainly found that interesting. Who knew that our electricity supply all depends on magnets? Until next time, check out the other videos as well as a task video later in this series or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.